Welcome back to my weekly blog. I'm so glad we got so many incredible emails from you guys about that weekly blog. I'm glad that I took the time to start this and I will do my absolute best to never miss a week. If I do, it's going to be very rare. I'm doing them live the actual week we're doing them. So uh, this is great stuff and I'm glad if I can do nothing more to inspire you to take action with these weekly videos, then I'm doing my job. You know, it's a couple of days past Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was last Thursday. I don't know about you, but I ate way too much. Um, but it was an incredible time. Good time to give thanks, even in these difficult times. You know, one of the things that struck me during Thanksgiving, I had uh, local people over. We were going to go to a, a good friend of mine's uh, house that we go to every year. But at the last minute, I wasn't feeling the best. We're going to be having a baby any day. So we decided to stay home and we cooked. And we ended up inviting a couple different neighbors over. And I, and I watched you know, my two-year-old daughter play on the floor with a bunch of other kids her age. And it was awesome. And while I was sitting there at the end of eating way too much and my second helping and way too much pie, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, loads of whipped cream, ice cream, just same thing we all do. I was sitting watching my daughter work on a task. She's two years old and, and you know how you ramp up with just a puzzle. If you have children or you have nieces or nephews or relatives, you know, little kids, they play with different puzzles that fit their age. And you know, when they're real little, they just have big square things fitting in the big square hole, that types of things, those types of things. And I was watching my daughter work on a puzzle that was probably a year ahead of her time. I'm not saying going here to tell you she's a genius, even though I believe so and she's gorgeous and smart. But when I watched her, she went at that puzzle nonstop. And it was difficult and she was turning and turning. And she just sat there for like an hour just going at it. And you know what it did? It really made me think about our childlike enthusiasm and how we lose it as adults. You know, she doesn't know the definition of it not working. When it was time for her to walk, she'd fall down a whole bunch of times and bump her butt, but she'd get up and try again. When she was doing this puzzle, she kept messing up, but she just kept trying and kept trying, and she got it. She definitely got it. And I think life wears us down a little bit, doesn't it? Sometimes, we, you know, we try something and, and people around us say it's not going to work or we see something on TV and we get, you know, a little judgment in our head or, or we, we look at, you know, what if it doesn't work and it fails and we give up before we go all the way through. Did you give up when you wanted to learn how to walk? Did you give up when you had to try, you know, you had training wheels on your bike? No, you kept going at it until you got it right. You know, if you're a parent, if you're married, when you first did that, it's crazy. I mean, my two-year-old daughter just moved from the crib to the toddler bed and, and it's, you know, she gets up every half hour now and just walks in and taps daddy on the cheek instead of being in her crib. It's a crazy time, but guess what? I'll just keep at it and we'll get through it and we'll figure it out. And that's how you have to feel about your financial future. Getting into real estate might be scary. But you know it works. It works for so many people at DeanGraziosi.com. It's allowed me to be a millionaire starting with nothing and a multimillionaire and, and all that stuff. But you see the successful people at this very site you're on changing their lives. And it doesn't have to be any different from you. It doesn't have to be any different for you. What, you, what needs to be different, though, is not letting your outside world or your years of being beat up allow you to give up and lose that childlike enthusiasm. You need to just go for it. So that's my message today. Go for it like a two-year-old, like, like a young kid that's learning to walk or riding a bike. Don't give up and, and don't look at failure as the worst thing in the world. Listen, with the strategies we teach you, like we talked about last week, finding deals at up to 50% off, locking them up, possibly assigning them, and we're going to talk about assignments next week, but possibly assigning them to someone else, there's no downside. The only downside is a little bit of your time. You've wasted time on some of the worst things in your life. I know you have because I have too. Stop wasting your time on certain things and putting them, put them towards your financial security and your future in real estate. You know, last week we talked about uh, getting a realtor to help you make a whole bunch of offers at a huge discount. And I saw one of the posts where someone said their realtor wouldn't do that. My suggestion is get a new realtor because in today's world, things are so tight we want aggressive people that want to make money. I'm not saying take advantage of a realtor, but find someone who's open to try new things. A realtor doesn't have to type up 25 offers. They could pick up the phone or pop an email and do 25 offers in 15 or 20 minutes. Find someone willing to do that. I'm going to give you one last quick story. I'm writing a new book. It's almost done. I'm literally going to be done in the next week. I have an editor. Every time I write a hunk, I ship it off to the editor and they clean it up. Well, he's reading my stuff, getting so excited. He goes out 
and he's going to want he wants to make money in real estate on the side besides being an editor and he finds a realtor and asks him if he'll do the 25 to 1 ratio you know try 25 offers to get one and the realtor sat there and told him that it'll never work it doesn't work and he's not trying it but in the next breath he told him how he's not making money anymore and whose fault it is and how the government is screwing him for lack of a better word and he's my editor said he walked off and got in his 12 year old rundown car bitter and left now I feel bad for that individual I'm not gonna criticize him I'm not making fun of his old car but he's so afraid that particular person was so afraid of change that he didn't embrace the opportunity to make a whole bunch of money the students that have found a realtor that's doing this for them are making incredible money in an area where other people aren't so let me just leave it at that as saying change is difficult you know it personally if a realtor doesn't want to make those offers, explain why it could work. Ask them to just try it once. And if they don't want to do it, find another realtor. I'll see you next week.